This video is going to be free of major spoilers. Wish has been out for some time now, and judging from the backlash the film has gotten, I wouldn't blame you for thinking that it is like the worst movie ever. A massive L for Disney. Seems like every YouTuber in the animation commentary community has made their video about Wish, and most of these reviews tend to lean towards the movie being generic or even downright bad. According to many critics, Wish was an underwhelming movie, with a boring soundtrack, ugly visuals, as well as annoying and or bland characters, including the main protagonist herself, Asha. Wish? Or like a Disney movie ordered on Wish? <coughs> okay, but here's the thing. These negative reviews aren't wrong. That's it. End of the video. Like and subscribe. Goodbye. No, but in all honesty, I do think that the majority of criticism thrown at Wish actually is valid. However, I do think that the movie isn't actually as awful as people make it out to be. There is more to this film that many people may have overlooked due to the glaring problems that are present. In my opinion, Wish isn't that bad. But can it be considered good? Well, it depends on who you ask. So I went to see the movie with my best friend, who, and I mean this in the most loving way possible, is a normie, plain and simple. <laughs> Sorry. They are what can be considered the epitome of the casual viewer, a perfect middle ground of the target audience for a Disney movie. And what can I say? My best friend actually liked the movie. Now granted, they might not invest as much dedication and passion into media as some of us would, but I do think their opinion is still valid in the grand scheme of things. Well, we, we call you normies. Okay, bye. What I mean by that is that to the average moviegoer, this film will most likely be worth a price for admission. And you might be thinking, well, going by that logic, then the live-action Disney remakes can also be considered good movies. Well, not exactly. See, these remakes take an already existing film that is usually beloved by audiences and retells it beat by beat in an inferior way, without really adding anything new. At least Wish tells an original story. Nothing in it can be called downright awful. Unfortunately, this is also where the problems start. Sure, Wish doesn't do anything offensive per se, but this has also led to the film not taking any risks in its storytelling. We have seen it all before, and heck, we have also already seen it done a lot better in countless other movies. Wish chooses to play it safe, making for a rather generic story in many parts. Also, we can all agree that the trend of having a quirky, adorable female lead in a Disney movie has lost its charm a long time ago. Asha is just another one of these protagonists. But she seems to be the worst one yet. Her personality isn't as polished as the ones from other adorable Disney girls that came before her. Sure, she has hobbies, goals, and even principles. However, these traits aren't as well established as, say, Anna's desperate longing to make connections after being isolated for her whole life, or Mirabelle's love for her family, and also her deep desire to prove her worthiness to them. Now let's take a look at what Asha has going for her. Well, she's a tour guide? She likes to draw? I think? It is shown like twice in the movie. Yeah, I can see why people think that she's kind of bland when compared to other Disney leads. Okay, but in my opinion, the whole tour guide thing, while at first seeming like a first draft idea that somehow made it into the film, is actually quite the good introduction. First of all, it establishes the city of Rosas as well as King Magnifico, and the whole wish fulfillment mechanic. This kind of world building allows the viewer to also become part of the tourist group our main character is showing around. Furthermore, the song also shows Asha's deep admiration for the kingdom and its rulers as well as how she and all the other inhabitants see Rosas as some sort of perfect utopian paradise. Where, literally, your wishes will come true. This sets up her future character development, and the later revelation in the film hits a lot harder, since Asha has to question everything she has believed in for her whole entire life. The only thing that kinda falls flat in this introduction scene is the song. Welcome to Rosas has some very, well questionable rhyming choices. For example, surprise and collide don't really rhyme, 
no matter how hard you try. Another example is the desperate attempt to rhyme 18 and ceremony. Oh come on, seriously? And that brings me to my next point, the soundtrack. Prior to seeing the film, one of my friends and I had already listened to some of the songs beforehand. And I, as well as many other people online, couldn't help but find them, well, quite generic and boring. They sounded more like Billboard pop songs as opposed to Disney Broadway musical numbers. Curiously, we looked up who was responsible for the songs featured in Wish. And what can I say? Things immediately started to make a lot more sense. Now the person in charge for the movie's soundtrack was Julia Michaels, a singer-slash-songwriter who has written songs for artists such as Selena Gomez, Gwen Stefani, Christina Aguilera, as well as Britney Spears. All singers who are well-established Billboard pop sensations. Now this doesn't mean that she is bad at her job, this just shows how Wish's songs seem to miss the mark for many people. They were written by someone who doesn't really have a background in musical theater, but instead in the mainstream music industry. Now I don't blame Julia Michaels at all, but rather Disney, who for some unexplainable reason thought that hiring someone who writes for artists in a whole different genre of music for the movie that is a celebration of 100 years for the studio was a good idea. Why not hire people that already are well-established songwriters for your film? Such as Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez. Or hell, even Lin-Manuel Miranda. My film is coming! I know the guy is annoying to many people due to his omnipresence in the last couple of years. However, you can't deny that he knows how to write a good Disney song. So, I told you that I actually listened to some of the songs before the movie was released. Well, I have to say that I was positively surprised by the last two songs in the film after seeing Wish for myself. I did actually like the tracks I hadn't listened to beforehand. They did pack more of a punch when compared to the other songs. But that's just my personal preference. Maybe you feel totally different. <laughs> that's okay. I suggest to give them a listen for yourself. Or even better, watch the movie before seeking out these songs, as they contain major spoilers for the film. Another thing about Wish that was critiqued quite a bit, even before the movie was released, were the visuals. Many folks were turned off by the aquarelle aesthetic the film was going for. Some even called the animation ugly or unfinished in general. I still remember when the first trailer was released, and people lost their minds because Asha's hands apparently didn't have any detail or something. Personally, I do like the artistic style which is going for, and while doing research for this video, I stumbled upon a number of sources saying that the movie does look a lot better on the big screen, and that the trailers on YouTube don't really do the visuals justice. I have seen animation fans complaining that Disney doesn't really try out new things with their art direction and stylization when it comes to their movies. They were sort of lacking behind on that front when compared to other animated movies from competing studios. I do find it funny that once they actually have the courage to try experimenting with their style, Disney is immediately hit with a huge wave of backlash, with people calling Wish ugly and all. And I do have friends that are hesitant to see the film due to its visuals. And I can't blame anybody for thinking that way. Whether or not you vibe with Wish's visuals, or wish it wills <laughs> comes down to personal taste in my opinion. The movie isn't appalling to look at in the slightest, but certainly doesn't hold a candle visually to movies such as Spider-Verse or TMNT Mutant Mayhem when it comes to implementing stylized graphics into a production. The last thing I want to talk about is the characters aside from our protagonist, Asha. Judging from the clips that were released before the movie was released, it seemed as though the talking goat would be quite annoying. Now, he is voiced by none other than Alan Tudyk, a real Disney voice acting icon. He has had minor roles in every movie from the mouse in the last decade, including Turbo in Wreck-It Ralph, Duke Wesselton in Frozen, Hey Hey in Moana, or Weaselton in Zootopia. Alan Tudyk also does the voice for the Joker in Harley Quinn, which is probably my favorite performance of his. How'd you come up with the answer? I don't know. Maybe because my son can count to frickin' seven! Unfortunately, in Wish's case, Valentino the Goat doesn't really add anything to the plot, which makes him part of the more unbearable Disney sidekicks. And to make matters even worse, he just constantly spouts one-liners 
but are just there to make little iPad kids laugh. My butt found it. I think, granted, Valentino isn't the worst sidekick ever, but that is only because he is not as overused in the movie as similar characters are. He just doesn't have enough screen time to annoy me personally. But the goat also doesn't add anything significant to the story. Speaking of underutilized characters, let's talk about Asha's friends. Now a lot of people who have seen the movie think that they were pretty underdeveloped. And yes, I know they are supposed to be an homage to the Seven Dwarfs, but most of Asha's friends sadly are reduced to a single character trait. Fleshing each and every single one of these guys out would not be possible within the movie's runtime. But maybe just cut some of them down? Heck, like why not make Asha one of the Seven for example? Now I do agree with the criticism about these characters for the most part. However, I do think that some of them actually are a little interesting. And if anything, I would have loved to learn more about them. There was potential there. What made these characters act in certain ways? These motivations are at the very best glossed over in the movie. At the very least, I was positively surprised that a bunch of them had an arc at all. Something that is quite difficult when your movie has such a big cast. In that regard, I must actually praise Wish. I do believe that these guys were friends and have known each other for a long time. Aside from the whole Seven Dwarfs reference, I also appreciated most of the easter eggs to other movies that were hidden in Wish. And aside from one at the end of the movie that made me roll my eyes, I do think they were implemented well into the film. It was actually a lot of fun trying to spot these easter eggs while watching, and some of them also open up the possibility for various theories surrounding Disney lore. Going into Wish, I was afraid this movie would be some sort of glorified kissing of their own butt for Disney. But in my opinion, these references weren't overwhelming or distracting, and were handled quite gracefully in more of a if-you-know-you-know you know kind of way. A hundred years of Disney is a big thing after all. I'll give him that. Additionally, many people have pointed out that Wish would have been a lot better if they had stuck to the original premise depicted in these pieces of concept art. Asha was supposed to fall in love with this wishing star, who turns out to actually be a Tumblr sexy man. But oh no, we can't have a classic love story in these modern woke Disney movies. Come on, how woke can Wish really be? They didn't even have one of the many first queer characters Disney loves to put in their new movies. But jokes aside, seeing scrapped versions of Disney films often make for a very interesting story. And sadly, we will never know how Wish would have turned out if they had stuck to that idea, or if this was a tragic case of lost potential. All in all, I do think me having to wait in order to see Wish improved my viewing experience significantly. This is because the film premiered a few days after the initial US release in my country. And you know how when a friend of yours hypes up a piece of media so much that when you finally seek out this movie or show, no matter how good it actually is, you just can't help but feel underwhelmed? You sussy baka. Well, for Wish it was sort of the opposite for me. Now a lot of things I had read or heard about this movie made it seem like this was going to be the worst thing ever. So I went into this film with, let's say, Mariana Trench levels of low expectations. And what can I say? I was actually positively surprised by Wish. Now this movie sure isn't awful, but it also isn't great, great, you know? It doesn't take any risks and is just average in most places. But whenever something cool does actually happen in the film, it sticks out a lot more because of that. In my opinion, this movie sort of feels like how normies think every Disney movie is, if that makes any sense. And I know that a lot of hate towards Wish also comes from us wanting to see Disney fail. Their questionable actions are finally starting to catch up to them. And trust me, I also think that there is nothing funnier than seeing a big bad company take an L. But I am also incredibly interested in the how and why things turn out the way they did. What was it like writing, drawing, editing, or animating for Wish? Which decisions and compromises had to be made in the writer's room? How did Wish end up as the movie we saw at the cinema? Like always, I encourage you to at least watch the film before you form your final opinion. And who knows, maybe you'll be just as positively surprised as I was. It's like I always say, hope for the best, expect the worst. Wish definitely isn't awful or unwatchable, but it sure isn't a masterpiece either. 
So, what did you think about the movie? Was it as bad as many made it out to be? Or did you actually get some enjoyment out of the film, like I did? Please let me know. And as always, please like and subscribe for similar videos about all sorts of different topics. Thanks and bye! <laughs>